So in today's class, we're going to be learning about perpendicular and angled bisectors. So before we get into solving perpendicular and angled bisectors, let's first go over some vocabulary that you need to know before you solve these equations. So first of all, we have the equidistant. The equidistant if is a point is at the same distance from two points. So as we can see, we have uh, point C is equidistant to point B and point D. So as you see right there, point B, point D, and then that C is the equidistant because it is the same length, both of them in the middle. Um, and the second vocabulary word that we have is the angle bisector theorem. And the angle bisector theorem is an angle bisector of any angle of a triangle that divides the opposite side in two segments that are proportional to the other two sides of the triangle. So as we see this in the relation, we have BC over BA, and then we have CD over DA. And as we see that it has a relationship between the angle bisector theorem because as we see, BC and the relation BA is the angle bisector term between CD and DA. Okay, and now that you have all the vocabulary words that you need to have, let's just go over a couple examples. So now let's start to apply the angle bisector theorem. Um, okay, just draw this first example. Okay, so in our first example, we have, and what are we looking for? As you can see, we are looking for what is AD. So we can examine this by looking for points A and D. So let's just circle that, and that is what we are going to be solving for. The first part of our equation is that we're going to be setting points AB and AD equal to each other. So let's just do that real quick. 6x minus 10 equals 3x plus 2. Okay. And then we're just going to simplify and just solve. So minus 3x, minus 3x on both sides. This becomes now 3x minus 10 equals 2. And then just continuing, add 10, add 10, cancel that out. 3x is now equal to 12. Then we're just going to be dividing to continue the equation. 3, and then x as a result equals 4. And then we're going to take the variable that we have of x, and then we're going to apply it to AD. So now that we have we have the side for AD, which is 3x plus 2, and now we're just going to plug in our x. So 3 times 4 plus 2, so 3 times 4 is 12, and you just add 2, and then we find out that AD is equal to 14. So that's basically just what you have to do for... Uh, angle bisector theorem. So now let's just go over another example. All right. Okay. So for example number two, we have a different triangle, but it's basically just the same exact math that's going into solving the equation. X, W, Y, and Z. We have 5n minus 2, and then the other side we have 2n plus 7. And then we're going to be looking for what is wy. Okay, so, yep, as we have the question, what is wy? So first we're, like always, going to be identifying where wy is. So wy is right there, and that would be the equidistant because w and x, w is equidistant to x and y. Okay, so now now that we've found the, what we need to solve for, let's actually just solve for n. So 5n minus 2 equals 2n plus 7. So now, yep, we just solve like we did for the last equation. Cancel that out. Minus 2 equals 7. And you just do add 2, add 2. Same thing we did for the last one. 3m equals 9. So then we're just going to finish off the equation. Divide by 3, divide by 3. And we find out that n equals 6. Or, yeah, n equals 3. 
I bet. N equals 3. And then same thing that we did for the last equation. We're just going to be plugging in N for WY. So WY equals 2N plus 7. So now we're going to be plugging in. So 2 times 3 plus 7. And as you know, 2 times 3 is 6. Then you add the 7. So as we know, WY will now equal 13. So now, as we'll continue, we'll just do a couple more examples. So now for example three. Once again, we're going to try to draw a different triangle, so like that. R and Q. So we're going to be looking for what is Q bar. So we're going to have 3N minus 1, and we're going to have 5N minus 7. Okay. Um, so, yep. Yeah. So then we have the right angle right there, and we're just going to do the same exact thing. Uh, so where is QR? So we have QR right here, so this is what we're going to be solving for. And then now let's solve for N. So now that we have 3N minus 1 equals 5N minus 7. Same thing that we did for the last two. We're just going to be minusing the 3N minus 3N. Um, then cancel that out. So you have minus 1 equals 2N minus 7. So then same thing that we did, add 7. Add 7. So 6 is now equal to 2n. Then we just divide 2, 2, and then we get that n equals 3. Okay, and then the same thing that we also did for the last two equations. Now we're just going to be plugging in n for qr. So qr equals 5n minus 7. So then we're just going to be doing 5n times 3, or 5 times 3 minus 7. So 5 times 3 is 15, minus 7, that is 8. So minus 7, and then N, our QR is equal to 8. Okay. And let's just go ahead with the next example.